go live now once again to our correspondent Clayton Kahn. He has been following this case and he continues to follow it for us. Clayton, so, so this new video we were just seeing and that footage, what is the significance of, of that? Is it really possible that this was just some type of common crime, a robbery perhaps, and not tied to the, to the journalistic activities of Espinosa nor the activist work of Nadia Vera? That would be certainly quite a coincidence. Clayton, Clayton, we can't hear you. If you can hold on just a second, I think you heard my question there. Um, we're talking about whether this could possibly just be a common, common crime. We're having trouble with the audio. Let's see if we can hear you now. Cody, uh, do you hear me now? I do, I do. Go ahead. Okay, well, according to the officials here in Mexico City and their investigation, uh, this video is important because it shows three individuals that are leaving the apartment uh, at 3.02 on Friday in the afternoon, uh, presumably connected uh, to the crime. Uh, the authorities are calling these three individuals their primary suspects. However, many people here are questioning, are raising the question as to where is the video footage, the, the video footage from this closed circuit television uh, surveillance camera from Mexico City of the three individuals entering the building. Uh, which, which would help define the, the time period of when the crime actually occurred. Uh, so a lot of people are saying that while this footage is important, much more information needs to emerge, much more uh, formal information, factual information. And that's what a lot of activists as well as journalists here in Mexico City are demanding, that uh, the, all lines of investigation be investigated, especially by the fact that two of the victims uh, were, had denounced uh, threats as well as uh, uh, surveillance by Veracruz state authorities against them, and they had come to the capital seeking refuge. That that line of investigation needs to be investigated just as much as uh, a line of investigation that had some sort of personal connection to the criminals or that it had something to do with a robbery. And what about social movements and press organizations, Clayton? Is that sort of their attitude as well following this footage that was released? Of course, given the high rate of crimes committed against journalists and activists in Mexico, are they willing to accept the idea that perhaps this crime may not in fact be tied to political motives? Well, a lot of uh, journalist rights organizations as well as activists and the family are, are all demanding again a very clear, truthful investigation and that all the lines of investigation be uh, followed. Uh, they say that they're not putting anything off the table, but that again, the importance that four four women were killed uh, that showed signs of torture, uh, especially signs of sexual abuse, that, that implicates uh, a femicide. They also say that one of the activists, uh, or one of the victims was an activist uh, who also uh, had denounced these, these threats by the state authorities of Veracruz. Well, Ruben Espinosa, the, the photojournalist, had also uh, denounced the same thing. And so that they are saying that all these uh, lines of investigation need to be investigated and that whether or not it was a robbery or whether or not it was a personal crime, that in the end it's bringing the subject of systematic abuse and violence towards critical voices in this country uh, to the public stage. Uh, whether it's journalism or whether it's activists, again, uh, Mexico is not, um, this is not a new case to Mexico of, of journalists or activists being killed for, for their political reasons. All right, Clayton, I guess we'll have to wait and see as more details become available. Certainly would be Quite a coincidence if this was some type uh, of common crime for a journalist who uh, was afraid for his life. Okay, Clayton Kahn reporting from Mexico City. Clayton, thank you. Thank you.